Honestly speaking, I think he was targeted by the military because he was not just a normal protester, he was with a microphone every day. Lasho is not that big of a city. The biggest there will be like is five protests and there will usually be three or two people with like microphones. And you know, I felt really sad because he was actually one of the most enthusiastic people there. And he was always proud of his the uh, ethnic roots and he wanted to be a lawyer. And the last time we spoke was about the French Revolution. It is really sad. For the military coup to fail, we have to continue protesting. Even though they are using tear gas, they're shooting us, we have to find a way to continue protesting against the military. And that for our ethnic minorities, it's not just finished by the military coup to fail. We also want the 2008 constitution abolished, and we also want a state where ethnic minorities are not prosecuted and we have a seat at the table. So my experience has been awful because the Burmese military has been coming almost every week and they have shot up the sky again and again to make sure that we're scared they have used fireworks and every time there's a night protest they would start shooting in the air or something. My grandparents who are extremely religious has not even practiced religion for two months. They had just been watching news all day, all night. For first day, I didn't have internet until 4 p.m. CNN, BBC was all cut up. I think everyone was in utter shock. I, I cried the first day as well. <laughs> I couldn't help it. The first sign of protest was hitting pots and pans. Yangon started that. So 8 p.m. they started the little uprising, I would say, where they start hitting pots and pans and BBC covered it. From that, there's the idea of the civil disobedience movement that was going on around the internet. And the first few days, a lot of doctors started quitting. And a lot of doctors were like, we can't work under the military government. And the doctor organization started organizing. And that's when CDM happened more. And then that's when like nurses, that's when like railway workers, accountants, janitors also like come in and say we're not working for this military government. Goal. They killed 82 people. They're asking $85 to give the body back after they murdered them. There's so many videos of police brutality. One kid ran into a well. They beat him up until he died. And right now, the death toll is over 700. A lot of like awful deaths. The other day, like a couple that was carrying milk, they were not even protesting. They were also murdered because they were on the street. So they're not even murdering protesters. They're murdering like people on the street. The youngest victim, I think, is five year old. Okay, one of the most important things that anyone can do is spread awareness, obviously, mm -hmm. you know, spread mm -hmm. awareness about atrocities that are happening in Myanmar, spread awareness about how this can help pro democracy movements in Southeast Asia. Second, continue mutual aid, and by that I mean like donating money to local groups that are on the ground because civil servants are on strike to help them continue being on strike.
we're only sending it mostly to ethnic regions. The problem is we're sending $85 to each person. That's also not considering the fact that some families have like six children. So sometimes we send like $150 if they're like bigger families, just to be fair. $85 can last a month for like two people or one person, one people, but not for like four people. There's like thousands of people on strike. I wish I could give more, but I have to give it to like everyone. It's, it's not safe to fundraise money because if you're caught fundraising, they can literally murder you. Other than that, I do feel like I'm working towards something tangible because as long as civil servants continue being on strike, that means that the military government isn't functioning. And if government isn't functioning, it's not a government. So I do feel like the funds I'm sending towards, it's really great. If we do actually win this revolution, the military will actually fall down this time. The military will, that thing will be over this time. And in a way, if that happened, I feel like the revolution was worth it. Let's <laughs> go.